I mean, come on, admit it. You're too lazy to put these beautiful animations on scroll in your website, even though you know how nicely they can elevate your website's user experience. Well, because you're lazy, let me make it easier for you by showing you how to create something like this in the easiest and quickest way possible. I will not only show you how to animate these texts on scroll, but I'll also show you how to animate these images with a staggering effect, where each image animate one after the other with a slight delay. How cool is that? To do all this, all you need is just a tiny bit of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. There are a few different ways to approach this problem, but in this tutorial, I'm going to stick with the classic intersection observer in JavaScript. Intersection observer is compatible with all browsers and should be our safest bet. All intersection observer does is tell you if an element in the DOM is visible to the end user. So if an element is intersecting, we can apply a CSS class that animates it into the DOM. Now to get started, open up your editor and just create a plain HTML page, type an exclamation mark followed by tab to generate some boilerplate. Then in the head of the document, link a stylesheet and a script named script.js. Make sure the script has the defer attribute so that it's executed after the HTML elements in the body are available. Now go ahead and create the script.js and style.css files. Now that we have a blank website, I'm going to add a bunch of different sections with some basic content in the body tag. The content itself doesn't really matter. Now in the CSS file, I'm adding a dark background to the body along with a few different styles. Now I'll center all the content inside each section and an easy way to do that is to make it a grid and then place the items in the center. If you have multiple items inside the section, you can also use align content center to kind of squeeze everything into the middle. I'm also giving each section a min height of 100vh just so we have a lot of room to scroll through. Now I'll go to the script.js and utilize the intersection observer. First, we'll need to identify an element in the DOM that we want to observe. We can give each element a special class, let's say box, and then in the JavaScript grab all the elements that have that class using document query selector all. After that, we need to create the intersection observer. This is a class that takes a callback function in its constructor. This can basically observe multiple elements or entries at the same time. In our case, the entries are all the sections with the box class. So this callback function will run anytime the visibility of one of the observed elements changes. And because it handles multiple entries, we will need to use for each to loop over them. Then we can run a simple conditional check to find out if that entry is intersecting the viewport or not. By intersecting, I mean if our scroll position has reached a particular section on the viewport or not. So if it is intersecting, we'll add a class to it called show which will make it visible. And then I can stop observing or unobserve that entry because I do not want to animate it again while scrolling back up. If you want to show the animation while scrolling back up as well, then instead of using classList.add, you can toggle the class show based on is intersecting property. This will remove the class show once you scroll away from that div and then add it back again if you encounter or intersect the div again, which will show the animation again. So now that we have the observer we need, to tell it what to observe, we can simply loop over all of the div with box elements and tell the observer to observe each one of them. Lastly, we need to pass the threshold property to the intersection observer in the second argument. The threshold is a value between 0 and 1 that indicates the percentage the observed target element needs to be visible within the viewport for the intersection observer to consider it to be intersecting. And that's all the code we need on the JavaScript side. Now we can handle the actual animation with CSS transitions. Apply the box class and opacity of 0 making the element invisible. And the show class as the name suggests will bring the opacity back to 1. Now we can easily turn this into a fade animation with a transition property and now when you view the website, you should get this fade in animation when the elements scroll into view. But to make the animation move from the left towards the middle, we can animate the transform property to start the animation all the way on the left side of the screen. And I'll also use the filter property to throw in a blur which gives us an animation that moves in from the left side and goes from blurry to clear thereby making it feel a little more realistic. Lastly, if you're working with multiple items in a list, they will look way cooler if you stagger them. By stagger, I mean applying a slightly different delay to each item as they become visible. As you can see here, I have a div with 4 children that all have a class of logo. In the CSS, we can target the children with the nth child pseudo selector. It will find all the elements that have a class of logo and the same parent element, allowing you to target each child element one by one. So I'll apply the first element a transition delay of 100 milliseconds, then 200 milliseconds for the second element, 300 for the third, and so on. And now as you can see, that's all it takes to create a far more interesting staggered animation. 
So that's all for the video. If you found this insightful, then don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.